We went to a math competition and we want to compare the scores of two teams, the red team and the blue team. How can we do that? Well, we know we can use tools like the mean, median, and mode, but what else can we use? Today we're going to talk about another way we can compare two data sets. Let's take a look at the scores. Each dot represents the number of points earned by a player at the math competition. One of the players earned 55 points, another one 62 points, 76, 83, and 86. The red team, we had scores of 59 points, 62 points, 75, 82, and 85 points. How do these two sets of data compare? Today we're going to talk about variability. Variability simply describes how spread out the data is. The closer the data, the less variability. Take a look at the scores. If we box them in, we see that the red box is much shorter than the blue box. That's because the red values are less spread out than the blue values. The blue values, because they're more spread out, have greater variability than the red values. It's also worth noting that less variability means that the scores or the data values are more consistent with one another. We say that the blue team scores have greater variability than the red team scores because the blue team scores are more spread out. In our first exercise, we have a consumer's organization that's going to be conducting an experiment. They want to find out the life expectancy of batteries and they're comparing brand A with brand B. They record the data with how long each battery lived. They had six brand A batteries and eight brand B batteries. The results from the study are plotted on the dot plot. The question that we want to answer is this. How can we compare the two batteries by discussing their variability? What's the difference between brand A and brand B? Take a few moments to look at the data and look at the variability. How spread out is the data? Which one is more spread out? How can you tell which one has greater variability and less variability? Please pause the video here and answer part A of this exercise. When we look at the dot plot, we see that the box around brand A, the red box, is much shorter than the box around brand B, the blue box. That means that brand A, because the box is smaller, is less spread out, meaning it has smaller variability. Brand B, being more spread out, has larger variability. Part B asks us, which battery do you think tends to last longer, or are they approximately the same? Justify your claim by explaining why you believe that your choice is true. Part C asks you what number you could calculate to compare the typical battery life of the two brands. Please pause the video here and answer parts B and C of this exercise. So which brand is better? Which one has the longer life? It turns out that if we look at the mean, the mean of brand A is 101 hours and the mean of brand B is 100.5 hours. It looks like on average brand A and brand B batteries last the same amount of time. But notice that's not the whole story. Brand B, which is in the blue box up above, shows that batteries can last far fewer or far more hours than 100.5. The red values are far more consistent. Speaking of the mean and how spread out the data points are, that brings us to our next topic, calculating deviations from the mean. Simply put, we want to find out how far each value is from the mean. Here we have our scores from the blue team at the math competition. We'll begin by calculating the mean, which is 72.4. Now we can find the deviations from the mean. 55, if I measure that out, is 17.4 units below the mean. I found that by taking 55 minus the mean. We always take the data value and subtract the mean from it. If the number is negative, like negative 17.4, that means the data value is less than the mean. If the number is positive, that means the data value was greater than the mean. We know that 55 is less than 72.4, so it doesn't surprise us that 
the deviation from the mean, negative 17.4, is negative. We then move on to point 62. 62 minus 72.4, the mean, tells us that that point is 10.4 units less than the mean. Now we move up to the next one, 76. It's now bigger than the mean. 76 minus 72.4 is 3.6. 76 is 3.6 units above the mean. We can similarly calculate that for 83 and for 86. The numbers that you see in blue are the deviations from the mean. They actually do have a practical application. We'll learn about that in the next video. In the meantime, let's practice calculating the deviations from the mean. We have two tables for the life of brand A batteries and the life of brand B batteries. We want to calculate the deviations from the mean. Begin by computing the mean and then use the formula to find the deviation from the mean. Please complete the table for the brand A batteries and then come back. We'll see how you did. Our deviations are negative 18, negative 7, negative 5, positive 5, positive 12, and positive 13. Next, let's calculate the deviations from the mean for brand B. Once again, you'll have to calculate the mean and then do the subtraction. Please pause here and complete the table for brand B. We find out that our deviations are negative 27.5, negative 24.5, negative 8.5, negative 6.5, 9.5, 16.5, 17.5, and 23.5. Now, let's take a look at a couple of histograms. We have two new brands of batteries, brand D and brand E. We've conducted the same experiment and we've recorded the data in this histogram. Notice that the x-axis is in intervals of 10. The height of the bar is the frequency, the number of batteries that tested at that life. First thing we want to do is estimate the mean. Remember, the mean is the balancing point. The balancing point is in this large bar here at approximately 110 hours. Now, we want to calculate the largest deviation from the mean. Remember, once again, this is an estimate. The largest value is out here at about 140. We just kind of picked the number in between 135 and 145, being the furthest out there. I do the subtraction, 140 minus 110, and I find that that deviation from the mean is approximately 30. So I'm going to estimate that the largest deviation from the mean is approximately 30 hours. The results for brand E are displayed in the second histogram. We want to do two things. The first thing we want to do is to estimate the mean. What do you think the mean is? Where is the balancing point? Then, estimate the largest deviation from the mean like we did in the last example. Please pause the video here and try part C and D. You should not make any calculations. Everything should be an estimate. We find that the mean is approximately 130 hours. That's approximately the balancing point of the histogram. The largest deviation from the mean, well, we look at where the largest value would be. It's somewhere between 155 and 165. So, we'll take the middle. We'll say it's 160. We subtract 160 minus the mean of 130, and we find that the largest deviation is approximately 30 hours. Which brand has the greater variability in its life expectancy? Well, let's find out. We can look at the range. If we find the largest value and the smallest value shown on the histogram, we see we have from 85 to 145. That's a range of 60 hours. If we look at brand E, we see that we go from 105 to 165. That's also a range of 60 hours. Because the range is identical for both sets of data, we say that they have the same variability. There's really no difference. So here's what you need to know. You need to know that you can calculate the deviations from the mean by taking the data value minus the mean.
Variability describes the spread of the data. The more spread out, the greater the variability. And this is everything you need to know to get started working with variation and deviations from the mean.